Further, my brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord. It is no trouble for me to write the same things to you again, and it is a safeguard for you. Watch out for those dogs, those evildoers, those mutilators of the flesh, for it is we who are the circumcision, we who serve God by his Spirit, who boast in in Christ Jesus and who put no confidence in the flesh. Though I myself have reasons for such confidence, If someone else thinks they have reasons to put confidence in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, in regard to the law, a Pharisee, as for zeal, persecuting the church, as for righteousness based on the law, faultless. But whatever were gains to me, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them garbage that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God on the basis of faith. I want to know Christ, yes, to know the power of his resurrection and participation in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, and so somehow attaining to the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained obtained all this, or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead, I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenwards in Christ Jesus. All of us then, who are mature, should take such view of things. And if on some point you think differently, that too God will make clear to you. Only let us live up to what we have already attained. Join together in following my example, brothers and sisters, and just as you have us as a model, keep your eyes on those who live as we do. For as I have often told you before, and now tell you again, even with tears, many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their destiny is destruction, their God is their stomach, and their glory is in their shame. Their mind is set on earthly things, but our citizenship is in heaven and we eagerly await a saviour from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, who, by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control, will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. Paul begins by warning against false teachers who hold their confidence in the flesh, relying on practices like circumcision to prove their holiness. Instead of living like this, we're to have circumcised hearts and humbly accept Jesus as there is no human way to earn salvation. He goes on to describe how his life was transformed when he truly encountered Jesus, as he received salvation through faith faith in Christ and moved away from his Pharisee thinking. Are we holding on to rigid thinking that we're only saved through our actions? This theme continues throughout the chapter and concludes discussing our citizenship. This is not a national citizenship where you have to be eligible or take a test. Rather, our citizenship is in heaven, a free gift of belonging free for all who follow Christ. This citizenship brings us great joy and an eternal promise of transformation. Today, don't get bogged down in your own actions and on the world, but cast your mind unto Jesus and rejoice.